A uniform thin rod can rotate freely in the vertical plane about an axis that is at its end. It is released from rest at a small angle to the vertical. Rank from high to low the magnitude of the net torque on the rod, the angular acceleration of the rod, and the angular velocity of the rod when the rod reaches these four positions. For the rod, net torque is produced by the gravity mg, which acts on the center of mass. Since the rod is uniform, center of mass is at the midpoint, so I will draw mg from the midpoint. These are the mg when the rod is at these four different positions. We need the net torque, and the net torque equals to the lever arm times the force, and right now, it's the mg that's producing the net torque. Since mg is the same for all positions, we just need to compare the lever arm. Lever arm is the distance between the line of force and the axis, the line of force and the axis. So the one with, with the largest lever arm is this force, because that's the lever arm. And then it's these two, the line of force uh, are on the same line, so they have the same lever arm. And then for this force, the line of force goes through the axis. So for D, the lever arm is zero. So if I rank the net torque by ranking the lever arm, I would have B is the highest, and then A and the C would have the same lever arm, and then it's D. For D, there's no lever arm, so the net torque is zero for D. And then we need the alpha. Since the net torque equals to I alpha, and the rotational inertia of the rod doesn't change for, for all these four different positions. So to compare alpha, we just have to compare the net torque. So the ranking would be exactly the same. So for alpha, it is also B is bigger than A equals to C and then bigger than D. To rank omega, we can look at the energy. As the rod swings down, it loses gravitational potential energy and gains kinetic energy. It's going to get faster and faster and faster. So for omega, it's the highest at the lowest point D, and then C, and then D, and then A.